Okay, so before we uh, define, look, so we define the integrating forms over parameter choice manifolds. So here's the case we want to define integrating forms over a k manifold. So if the support lies in one coordinate patch, right, then we want to define it like this. And it's a variant of the reparameterization only up to sign. So we need some orientability of M to define the integral. So let's start with functions. So if we start with diffeomorphisms. So this diffeomorphism is orientation, orientation preserving if we have this. Otherwise, it's reversing if it's negative. And M is a K manifold. We have two coordinate patches. They overlap, right? We call the overlap if the image set is non zero, so non empty. And we say they overlap positively if this is orientation preserving. If this diffeomorphism is orientation preserving, then they overlap positively. So, which means that the determinant of this is positive. Okay? So, if M is covered by a collection of pairs of coordinate patches such, such that they overlap positively, then we say M, M, M is orientable. If M can be covered by. So, for a collection, we adjoin, we adjoin coordinate patches such that it overlaps all these given positively. So we're joining new coordinate patches such that it overlaps all the given ones positively. And this expanded collection is orientation on M. So for M, your given manifold, your given orientation is called a oriented manifold. So let's just start with some basic cases if it's a one manifold. So we define a T such that for any P we have a, we given a coordinate patches that belongs to a given orientation. We define TP equals to this, or alpha of T not equal to P. And this is a unit vector. And T is called a unit tangent field and is just velocity vector divided by its length. And here we show that T is well defined. So if beta is the second coordinate patch, okay, we'll let G define to be this. So G is a different morphism of a neighborhood of T naught and neighborhood of T1. Now we have this calculation by chain rule, and this is a one by one matrix because G is oriented preserving, which means that the determinant of this is greater than zero. But the determinant of this is simply equal to itself, this thing itself. So this is greater than zero. Well, with that, we can divide on both sides. And also, this is smooth function, and this is a smooth function, so which means that t is a smooth function. Okay? Alright. So now we come to n minus 1 manifolds. We're doing with like normal, normal vector. So for p belong to the manifold, we define this a unit vector that is orthogonal to all these vectors. So we give it m oriented, this. And corner patch and alpha x would be then this gives a basis for this, and we talked about this before, and we require this to be right-handed, so that we can determine the sign of n. Okay. Now we come to n manifold. For m a corner patch, we know that this is n times n. The natural orientation of m we define it to be all coordinate patch such that the determinant is greater than zero. And we know that two such patches overlaps positively. We use the chain rule and the property of determinant gives the result. And we show that M can be covered by such patches. So we are well defined. Everything is well defined. So for P, we pick a coordinate patch. So we shrink U to be an epsilon ball. Then we know that U is connected. If this is greater than zero in some point, because it is continuous, so the image set is connected. 
which means that if there's a v such that this is less than zero, then by intermediate Fowler's theorem, there's a u prime such that it ma uh, it takes the value of zero. But this will imply that it's not full rank and violates the third property of a coordinate patch. So it's a contradiction, which means that it's either positive or entirely negative. Entirely positive or entirely negative. So here, if we have entirely positive, then we're done. If we have coordinate that is entirely negative, then we define this reflection map. So it reflects the first coordinate and the other the ones and we're fixed. Then this function, we have this result. Then we're done, right? And here, in general, we have beta equal to alpha of r, then beta overlaps a negatively. But all the betas overlap positively, right? Which means that we call this collection is a reverse orientation or the opposite orientation of the given alphas. Okay, so here is the theorem thirty four point one. So what it means, what it shows is shows that thirty four point one is so if M is oriented K manifold with non empty boundary, then this manifold is orientable. Okay, so. So for p was this alpha and as a as in the proof of this, we so we, as in the proof of twenty four point three, where we prove that the boundary is a k manifold without boundary, right? So we have this alpha zero we define to be like this, and this is a coordinate patch on the boundary. What we want to show us is if these two overlap positively. Then these two also. Then we know that this is orientable, right? So here let's just start. We'll let g be g go to this and they're open in hk because they it's in the boundary. So we have lemma. It shows it gives a criterion of the point being an interior or a boundary point. Then we know that this is greater than zero by assumption because they overlap positively. Now for x belongs to those points. The last row of the, the, the derivative is equal to something like this. Well, why would it look, be looking like this? Because if x isn't, so this is basically this, right? For g k x, it maps to zero, right? Here's a diagram. So, so we have g is a different morphism between these two sets, and we have this. Well, what is g? g is like a transition map, right? is the transition map so this we go alpha and maps to boundary of the manifold when we take the inverse image well only those points maps to the boundary points right because these two are open in hk we have lemma we have lemma for that so so which means that which means that this it maps to zero right for x belongs to this set, it maps to zero. So when changing these two sets, it won't make x escape from this set. We change the first k minus one coordinate. We'll still hold x in this set, right? It won't do anything. It's a constant function. So if one increases the last coordinate, then it escapes from this set. Well, it becomes into this set. Well, then gx is into this set we have lemma then this is greater than zero right so it's increasing we of course we can say that it's greater than equal to zero but we know that if this is equal to zero then it will imply that the determinant of the entire thing is equal to zero which is what we not do not want because we assume that right so yeah this is greater than zero and also This is greater than zero, so that this matrix has the determinant greater than zero. So this is basically you have you have k times k, right? So you have k times k. You just hit take k. So so k minus one. 
okay minus one and this is the matrix is just the derivative of this function and we talk about this in the proof of 24.3 theorem okay so we are done right now so we have a new definition so if metal is oriented we have to find the induced orientation if the k is even we just we would just fix it if it's odd we, we reverse the given ones by this operation right so all right so this concludes this lecture